I'm going to be giving a talk on SymbiFlow. And I guess the first question, if I get this working, Lou, it was working a second ago. OK, um, so the first question is, what is SymbiFlow? And I think to understand what SymbiFlow is, you first have to look at the whole EDA tooling ecosystem. And so this is my attempt at drawing everything in an EDA tooling um, ecosystem using wonderful blocks with curved edges. Um, and when you start looking at this, you kind of see that there's this really big hardware description language um, area. And I like to think as a software developer that hardware description languages are kind of equivalent to the whole software ecosystem. Um, there's already a whole bunch of existing solutions in hardware description languages. You've got things like Verilog and VHDL. And then on top of those, you've got things like MeGen and Chisel. Um, but just like software, we don't actually know what the best programming language is. And so um, what is the best HDL language? Um, I don't know. And so I think this is an unsolved problem. And so I'm going to ignore that problem. Um, <laughs> then if we look at like verification, testing, and simulation, we actually have quite good simulators that are actually really good. And we're going to hear a talk about some of the improvements in Verilator a bit later today. But Icarus is also really cool. Um, and so since people seem to already be doing stuff in this area, I'm also going to ignore this area. Um, as well, um, there's ASICs. There's also a bunch of um, existing solutions. And we heard about Chipforge yesterday. Plus, ASICs are kind of slow. Even if I was right next to the lab, it'll probably take maybe a couple of days to get a chip manufactured. Um, I'm a software engineer. I want instant gratification. And so I want something in seconds. So I'm going to ignore the ASIC world as well. Um, and that brings me to FPGA tooling. And I think this is where um, we really need better open source tools. Um, Clifford Wolf started this project called Project iStorm, um, which showed that it was definitely possible to create open source tools for FPGAs. And so what is SymbiFlow? Um, SymbiFlow is looking at just FPGA, uh, Verilog to FPGA bits flow. So we don't care about the, um, how you describe it. We don't care about ASICs. We care a little bit about testing and simulation. But ultimately, it's all about producing a bit file that you can load onto an FPGA. Um, and so, you take our diagram, these are the parts we care about. Um, so SymbiFlow is an end-to-end, -end, multi-platform FPGA flow. And I like to think of it as the GCC for FPGAs. Our goal is to enable you to use the same tools no matter which FPGA you're targeting, who you're buying it from, who made it. Um, and we want it to be open source. We want it to be multi-platform. We want it to be pluggable and changeable, uh, interchangeable. And one of the really big things that I believe in is we want to enable new innovation in this area. Um, currently, the vendor tools are giant black boxes that everybody has to deal with. And look, talking like the Chisel guys were talking yesterday about all the cool stuff they're doing, all the information that Chisel has is thrown away when it goes into Verilog. And then the vendor tools try and re-extract all that information. And that's terrible. And I think an open source flow would really help that. Um, so SymbiFlow, a end-to-end, multi-platform FPGA flow. 
for those who didn't already know. Um, so what are the parts to SimbiFlow? Um, so this diagram gives you a general overview of the parts. Um, first, we have synthesis and mapping. And you're probably all familiar with Yosis. Yosis is a great tool. Um, Cliff has done a really great job there. And so we're just going to use Yosis for synthesis and mapping. Um, as I said, we're very much targeting the ability to load onto an FPGA, so an end-to-end -end flow. You shouldn't have to use vendor tools at all, but sadly vendors are less happy to provide the information that we need to do this. And so a big part of the SimbiFlow project is documenting the bitstream format for various FPGAs out there. This started with Clifford's project iStorm and then um, extended to other projects, which I'll go into in a bit. Then there's place and route. So once you've done your synthesis, you want to get it into a bitstream, you have to do place and route. And at the moment, there are two open source solutions um, that fall into the place and route category. The last thing is a little bit complicated. Um, what we call the architecture definitions, these are basically a description of the actual primitives and structure found inside the FPGA. Um, they're kind of related to the bitstream because the bitstream tells you how that these devices are configured inside the FPGA and how to set the bits up so you get a configuration, but it's really the architecture definitions that tell you what is in an FPGA and how it's connected together. Um, this also feeds into the place and route tools because the place and route tools needs to know what parts to place and where to place them and how they're connected. And in the future, I'm hoping it also feeds into Yosis and describes um, the things that can be mapped to and hopefully some of the ways they can be mapped. Um, we're also looking at doing simulation and testing of these architecture definitions. Because it turns out we're all humans and we're all terrible at writing code. And so what we want is the ability to verify our descriptions uh, actually work. And so we're using simulation and testing to verify that our descriptions of what's in an FPGA uh, actually execute and work the way we think they should. And so I like to think of it as the architecture definitions a really executable documentation of what is available inside an FPGA. And so I've covered it a little bit, but how did we get to this point? Why does the SimbiFlow project exist? Um, well, it all started with Clifford's original project, iStorm. Um, he took Yosis, and I believe in uh, collaboration with Cottonseed, developed Arachna and did the documentation with project iStorm. This was really awesome. It was the first full end-to-end uh, flow in the open source world. Um, and then Clifford started Project X-Ray. You may have heard about that. It kind of started, had a lot of good progress, but then kind of Clifford got really busy. Um, and so it kind of stalled for a while. And this is where SimbiFlow project really kind of came from, was trying to make this scale beyond Clifford. Clifford is really awesome, but there's only one of him. Um, and we've yet to invent cloning machines. So how can we scale out Clifford? And this is where the SimbiFlow project started. And so the problem we ran into was Arachna was a really good first uh, point of um, developing, but it wasn't timing driven. And for bigger parts, it wasn't really designed to allow multiple um, architectures. 
And so we started using uh, Verilog to routing as a place and route tool and started describing the architectures in a way that we could feed into Verilog and routing. And this is kind of what we had at launch. We continued to um, extend Project X-Ray. And then Project X-Ray, one of the really important parts we did about it was document the process we used to document the bitstream format. And this inspired Project Trellis, which is another project to document the bitstream for the Lattice ECP5 parts. And Dave Shah is going to give you a very detailed talk about this afterwards, after my talk. Um, but Verilog to routing is an old project, which has a huge amount of advantages, but also means it has a huge amount of technical debt and a long time, um, a lot of things that didn't work. And so Symbiotic EDA started experimenting with a replacement for Arachna, which they've called NextPinar because it's the next Pinar after Arachna. Um, and so we're hoping that NextPinar gets to a stage where we think of it as a really strong part of the whole SymbiFlow project um, in the same way that Yosis, which is mainly developed by Clifford and Symbiotic EDA, is considered part of the SymbiFlow project, but an external part. Um, and so this is the full SymbiFlow tool suite. Um, so what's the current status of this? Well, as I mentioned, Bitstream documentation is a really important part of this project. Um, so what is the status of the Bitstream docs? This table kind of gives you a summary of it. Um, you can see that Project iStorm, which Clifford started with, is really far way along. X-Ray is slowly getting there, but still taking it. ECP5 had Dave Shah work on it, so he amazingly got a lot of stuff done much more quickly than the rest of us. Um, so, S40, we have quite a lot of devices supported. There are a couple of little devices still in the S40 series that if you want to get your feet wet, that you could try and help with. Um, there's full documentation for like logic, block RAM, I.O., hard IP blocks, um, single port RAM and DSPs. And there's pretty good Verilog models and Bitstream, um, but we still need a good replacement for what I call the tech libraries. At the moment, um, you really spend a lot of time referring back to the documentation released by Lattice about what's inside the ICE-40 parts. And that documentation is not great in many areas, and we don't want to have you depend on documentation from Lattice, which could disappear at any time, right? We can't also reproduce that documentation. It's copyrighted Lattice. So we would really like to have tech libraries and descriptions as an open source equivalent and available. Um, the ECP5, um, Dave has really done an excellent job here and will give you a lot more detail in the next talk. Um, it basically supports pretty much all of the ECP5 series, including the series which has the five gigabit um, transceivers, which is pretty cool. Um, he's got pretty much all the logic, interconnect, clocks, block RAM, basic I.O. and PLLs documented. He would love some help with the DSP, SIRDES, and like a lot of the complicated I.O. logic. Um, so if you want to help, this would be awesome. Um, we have some Verilog modules, but we really would love to improve, again, the tech libraries and to improve the timing documentation. Um, he only has data for the minus eight speed grade parts. He would love to have documentation for other parts. Um, for the Series 7, this is probably one that you're very interested in. Uh, most people have a Xilex chip. Um, we're currently targeting the Artec 7 EC7A50T which is actually the same part as the 15T and the 35T. 
Um, we have full information for the logic, the distributed RAM and the routing. Uh, block RAM and clocking is in progress, but would really love help with IO, hard blocks and DSPs. We have an initial conservative timing model as of a couple of weeks ago. And so this is enough to do um, place and route, but we're yet to actually do a full place and route. Um, so this is an internal picture of the 50T. We've mainly been concentrating on this region here. And through decoding these regions, which are like um, slice Ls and um, the interconnects that connect them, it turns out we actually understand pretty much all these bits in green, which is quite a lot of the chip already. Um, we don't understand things like um, up here is the GDP, down here is the PCI Express, I believe. This is some of the extra interconnects. And all the I.O. we don't understand yet. Um, the approach we're taking, though, is that we're generally looking at using a harness so that a harness generated for your specific board via Vivado and that means that we should still be able to do a lot without having full understanding of the I.O. And so this is kind of the current status. You can see the database of all the tiles in a similar to the uh, iStorm database. Um, and so there's actually quite a lot available here. And as I said, we have the full slice Ls and slice Ms, which are distributed memory and the clocks. And you can kind of see, again, we know most of the bits. There's a whole bunch of bits that are never used. Um, I wonder what they're used for, probably testing or something. And so this kind of gives us a status of the bitstream documentation. Um, the advanced tiles is definitely an area we could really um, use your help decoding. But these aren't really required to start using these tools. I have a question for anybody. Does anybody recognize this diagram? You don't get count, Dave. What about you? Do you know what this diagram is? Logic cell. Yes, a logic cell. Yeah. It's a very particular logic cell. It is the first one. Um, so one of the big things about the SymbiFlow project is trying to make it possible for people to replicate what we've done because we're never going to be able to support every FPGA out there if we have to develop everything ourselves. And so we have a project going on that is documenting the first Xilex part the EC2000 series parts. And this is a really interesting part because it's small enough that it fits in your head. And you can understand this one completely. Um, apparently, it was $55 to $80 on the initial thing, and you needed to pay $12,000 to get the tool chain for it. Um, also, the 2018 part had 100 tiles, and the 64 part had 64 tiles. I don't quite know what was going on there. Um, it doesn't have RAM, so that makes things a lot easier. And this is basically being targeted as the my first FPGA that is able to be fully place and routed and documented using SymbiFlow. And kind of an introduction that gets people started. Um, how do you describe a logic cell? How do you describe routing? How do you describe I.O. blocks? All that type of thing. It's a LUT-based um, device. You should not confuse it with the Cool Runner, despite it having a 2 in the name. It's not a Cool Runner 2 device. It's a totally different series. Um, so this is Project 2064, which is still in progress. The other interesting thing is this part is old enough that we can even show you diagrams of the actual transistors of the in, implemented in the part. And so who here knows um, Ken Scherf, I think is how you pronounce it. He runs a really awesome blog 
that takes you through how a lot of your ICs are constructed. He is going to do a write-up on this part and tell you exactly how this is implemented in Silicon, which I think is really cool. Tim, what's the purpose of, of this? Is this just a pure documentation exercise? Or? Yeah, this is a pure, have a very simple example that people can actually play with and understand fully as a starting thing before you try and document something as complicated as this chip or a more complicated Altera chip or that type of thing. It's kind of like, as I said, my first FPGA. Um, so this is kind of the status of all the Bitstream documentation. Um, you can see that we have full documentation for pretty much most things because it turns out it doesn't have most things that are really complicated, which makes it very easy to document. Um, but what is the current status of the synthesis mapping and PNR? Um, because there's no point having documentation for the Bitstream if you can't generate any of the Bitstreams. Um, we are using, as I said, Yosis for the front end and the synthesis and mapping, and NextPNR and Verilog to routing are the place and route. Um, so we're both of the place and route tools use Yosis as the front end, and both of the place and route tools are timing driven. And this is a summary of the status. Um, for Verilog to routing, we're only using the place and route part of um, Verilog to routing, and we have support for doing place and routing on the ICE40. Um, it's always good to start with a device that we already know. Um, so we have support for that. Um, and we also have initial support for the Series 7 in terms of the logic and the tiles. What is currently still missing for the Series 7 is the routing. Um, oops, that's too far. Um, so we're hoping in the next couple of weeks we'll actually have routing working and that will then allow us to do a uh, place and route for Series 7 devices using VPR. Um, next PNR has a different set of things. Um, it has a uh, support for ICE40, and it should beat Arachna PNR in pretty much all cases. Um, if it doesn't, you should go and bug the Symbiotic EDA guys to fix it, because um, it should. Dave Shah has also added experimental ECP5 support, um, which he'll give you more information about in the next talk. And so what can you do with this? Uh, for ECP5 and Project Trellis, see you next talk. I'm not going to steal Dave's thunder on what he can do there. Um, for Project X-Ray, we already have the ability to do place and route of a single um, wire. So you can actually run a real demo on a real board that connects any of these arbitrary switches to any of these um, uh, LEDs without using any vendor tools, complete end-to-end. -end. Um, obviously, this is a trivial example. Um, but we understand enough to do um, full place and route. We just haven't gotten to the stage of being able to actually generate it. Which brings me to the last point. How can you help? Um, <coughs> this is all done um, with a few engineers. We need your help to make this GCC a reality, GCF FPGA is a reality. And so, if you help, things are going to get better quickly. Um, if you know Python, you can help. Um, it doesn't matter whether you know hardware at all. If you just know Python, I, almost all our scripts are written in Python, and I can definitely find something for you to do. It doesn't matter if you have no hardware experience, no understanding of FPGAs, no understanding of Verilog. If you know Python, you can help. If you know C++, you can also definitely help. Um, all of VPR, NextPNR, and libraries are all written in C++. So you can definitely help if you know C++. If you know Tickle, I do not know Tickle, but all our tools that use um, the EDA tools to document what the chips do are written in Tickle. And so I would love your help there because this is a part that I can't work on. Um, and so it would be great to have more people contributing to that. If you know Verilog, 
Um, you can help by writing things like the simulation models and a whole bunch of other things that have to be handwritten because we can't extract them automatically. Plus the testing. Um, if you know XML, a whole bunch of the file formats um, for VPR, for example, or written XML, um, having good data bindings to enable us to quickly read and write XML would be really helpful. Um, if you know English, which I'm hoping everybody in this audience does, otherwise you're going to be very bored, um, you can help because all the documentation is written in English um, and the big part of this project is just writing useful documentation to help people understand how to do this. We want this community to grow and we want to eventually support every FPGA on the planet and the only way we can do that is by enabling people who previously wouldn't have even considered this an option to contribute to as an option. And so that is um, something that pretty much anyone in this room can probably help with, even if it's just helping improve the quality of English in our docs. Um, if you know things like Docker or other sysadmin tools, we would love to make it easier to get set up with Symbiflow and get going. Um, and if you, uh, not no time, if you have time, I promise you I can find a task that you can be useful to our project. Um, so this is our GitHub link. This is the mailing list, which is only just created, so you can go and sign up. This is an email to me if you're too scared to email the public mailing list because you think you'll be stupid. I promise I don't bite. Um, and um, so you can quite happy to email me privately and I'll try and respond. If I don't respond to you, email me again. It means that I probably missed your email. And as I said, I will find you a task um, that makes you useful to this project. Doesn't matter what set of skills you have, I'm sure I can find something that you can help. So if you have time, time is the hardest part to find people with. Um, and so that's a description of the Symbiflow project. It's a very high level description. Um, come and talk to me if you want a much more low level description. Um, and my thing says it's 27 minutes, so I've got like two minutes for questions. If I wanted to use Symbiflow right now, what what chips would I be able to, to use this for? Um, so the ICE 40 is obviously the big one that kind of works across the board. Um, it depends what you want to do. If you want to experiment and learn how place and route stuff works, then either NextPinner or VPR is kind of valid. Um, Dave will give you a bit of an understanding of what you can do if you have an ECP5 chip. Um, a, he has something that is holding up now that seems to be glowing in some way. So apparently he can do something that glows. Um, I could do that. Um, definitely uh, for Series 7, it's a little bit early to actually do real stuff, but um, you can help us get there sooner. I definitely think by the end of the year we'll have some type of place and route for Series 7 for some um, level of designs. It's probably not going to be using hard blocks, it's probably not going to be using CERDES, um, but definitely something that can probably do a CPU style, a basic CPU, something like PicoSoc is what we tend to target as first. Um, we can already do PicoSoc placement, but we don't have the routing information for Series 7 yet. Um, but a guy recently picked up that work and has been like blazing through that stuff. Um, so I'm hoping by like next week we should have a bunch of stuff there. Um, I spend a lot of my time just helping people get started rather than coding um, because I found that's more effective um, because I don't have a huge amount of time and so getting other people to be more effective, I think is a great way to help grow this community. The reason I'm giving this talk is not because I wrote most of this stuff, but because it allows Clifford to be sitting up the back working on his laptop now. So um, 
you know, things like that. Make other people more effective is kind of my job, which is why I'm quite happy for you to email me and I'll find you something to do. Tim, thank you. Um, uh, the frustration thing about this talk is I want to give up my day job and work on this instead because it's fabulous stuff. Um, any plans for Altera chips? Um, there is a guy who's done a thing called Project Chibi, which I believe is a Max series part. Max 5. Max 5. Um, I went to go and put some stuff in this presentation about it and found it didn't have a license file to attach to it, so I wasn't able to like play with it. Um, I'm going to hit him with a stick and tell him to put a license file on it, um, and then I can probably give you some status about what ECP, uh, what Altera stuff is, um, but ultimately we would love the vendors to help us. Um, I am working on that, um, but yeah, like Altera is kind of, if you want to support Altera, we would love to have you contribute to Altera support. Um, interesting, VTR um, is, the beta, is the basis for Quartus. Obviously Quartus has been heavily improved since VTR became the basis for like the current Quartus. Um, but it means that a lot of the examples in the Verilog to routing documentation look like Altera parts internally. Um, and so like they have actually pretty good logic description of things like the Stratix parts um, because Altera and the VTR community collaborate quite well, but they don't have any of the routing information there. So you'd have to go and document that. You'd actually have to document the bitstream before you can produce a bitstream. Um, so yeah. I'm surprised nobody's asked me this question. Um, this is kind of the basic status at the moment. If you want to use an ECP5 part, use NextPinR. If you want to use a Series 7 part, maybe play with um, Verilog to routing. Both can do ICE40. Um, NextPinR probably does ICE40 better than VPR at the moment um, because uh, VPR does not support most advanced blocks and the carries are a bit dodgy at the moment. Um, but yeah, there's also um, the advantage of VPRs, the 15 year history, the advantage of NextPNRs, the six month history. Um, you know, these are both advantages. Having less history means that, you know, NextPNRs written in modern C++ that takes advantage of, you know, the things we've learnt in the last 15 years, whereas VPR was written with the idea that most of these features didn't exist yet. Um, but VPR has had 15 years worth of, um, you know, development. So it has a lot of interesting things and we're hoping to increase collaboration because research is heavily focused on VPR and we believe by them targeting real devices they will be able to produce more useful results that can be used in things like NextPNR to improve the performance of NextPNR. Um, and there are definitely projects looking at, and people looking at how can we share more between the two projects. And maybe Clifford will talk a bit about things like the Python API. And now I'm pretty much stealing time from Dave, so I'm going to hand over to him and go and grab a quick drink while he's setting up. Thank you very much.